Captain. I am a member of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences. I've been a member for 43 years and I've had the privilege of having two Academy Awards. I was so shocked to hear Jonathan Glazer go up to accept his Oscar on the film that he did on the Holocaust. And he, he said this while tens of millions of people around the world are listening and deliberately disparages his own people and the Jewish homeland of Eretz Yisrael, desecrating the memory of six million Jews, amongst them members of my family. I was not only appalled by Glazer's words saying this, right now we stand up as men who refute their Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked by an occupation which has led to conflict for so many innocent people. But I was further appalled by the silence in reaction to his words. Tens of millions of people were watching. Where was the audience? The people that were sitting in the academy that night. People who should have gotten up and booed him immediately. A friend of the world, start booing him. Glazer had a missed opportunity. Instead of using his platform in front of the millions worldwide to stand up with its with Claudius world and the Jews and the hostages, he blames the Israelis in public, calling them occupiers, and he sympathizes with Hamas. Make no mistake about it, Hamas is nothing less than the Nazis of the 21st century. We shouldn't call them Hamas, we should call them Nazis. Their final objective, just like Hitler's will be, if they had the chance, their objective would be the total removal of every Jew on this planet. There is no context for burning babies, raping women, killing parents and their children in front of each other and taking hostages. Like the allies of World War II, we have no alternative but to completely eliminate these terrorists. Let us not forget, and the world has forgotten this, it should be repeated over and over when you meet a person. Tell them this, what I'm telling you now. In 19, in the closing days of World War II, this is what happened. The United States, France, England, Russia, and Canada, having already devoured Hitler's armed forces, did the following. They destroyed the Berlin Railroad System, as well as 12 churches, rendering 450,000 Berliners homeless, tens of thousands dead, because they knew, why did they do that? You knew it was only a matter of time, you win the war, that they were dealing with a leader who would settle for nothing except the total destruction of Western civilization. That is precisely what is happening today with the leaders of Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, and Iran. We've already paid the supreme price of losing one third of our world population because of the world's fa failure to respond in time. We will never make that mistake again. As Simon Wiesenthal warned the world, he said it over and over, he lost 89 members of his family, so he has the right to talk. And he said to the world, Be beware, freedom is not a gift from heaven. It is something we must fight for each and every day. My family and I are deeply honored by this presentation of the Menja War. A special thanks to you, Stephen Geiger, for his wonderful work and to the historian, my friend, Michael Bernthal, and to Dr. Kira Stein and Professor Emeritus, Dr. Judea Pearl. Thank you as well to Rabbi Suffren, the Rosh Hashiva of Yula High School, all the Rabbeim, an institution I had discussed and the privilege to, to found here in Los Angeles. Thank you very much. I'm your girl,